What's going on gardeners? It's Sunday, March 5th and spring is in the air here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina and I can't wait to begin a brand new growing season. That's why on today's video I'm going to show you how to condition or season straw bales so you can have your very own straw bale garden in your backyard. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear, your support is greatly appreciated. Did you know that you can grow plants directly inside of a straw bale just like you can inside a nursery container filled with potting mix? It's true and it is a lot cheaper and more lightweight than having to go out and buy large nursery containers and filling them full of expensive potting mix. There are a number of reasons why you may want to start your own straw bale garden. Maybe you want a small garden and you don't want to pay for expensive lumber. Maybe you're renting and you can't dig up the soil. Maybe you have low quality soil. There's a ton of reasons why. And to make things simple, I will link to a video above that I just made that discusses reasons why you may want to start your own straw bale garden. It may inspire you. Now that being said, you can't simply buy a straw bale and plant directly into it. You have to condition them first or season them first, which is to begin the composting process and let the straw bale start to break down. Now that may sound complicated, but I'm here to tell you it's not. In fact, it is so simple when done properly, seasoning or conditioning your straw bales can be done in only 10 to 14 days. And for those of you that like written instructions as well as verification that a system works, in the video description, I will also drop a link to the University of Illinois extension that has a great article on conditioning straw bales. Over those 10 to 14 days, you will go through a system of steps that will condition your straw bales very quickly for direct planting. And your first three days are going to simply be soaking the straw bales down. They have to be completely saturated and that will begin the composting process. But before I show you how to water in the straw bales, I strongly recommend that you turn all of the straw bales on its side. This is how you typically see a straw bale, which lays down on the wide section and then it has the strings showing. Well, what we actually want to do is we want to turn it 90 degrees. We want to rotate it so all of the straw is in a uniform pattern. Because the straw on the top right here, it crosses in X's, it will be less likely to absorb the water and the fertilizers that we will apply on it later. So if we simply pick it up like this and we rotate it, when we do that, all of the straw is in a perfect line, so everything will seep into the straw bales more effectively. And that is what I've done right here. I've taken all of the straw bales and I've laid them down on their sides, and I've also placed them in one long straight row. That will make it much easier to water everything in. So on days one, two, and three, all you have to do is come out with a hose or a watering wand or some other means and soak down all of your straw bales. And you need to soak them down really well. They need to be saturated. Now, my personal opinion is the best time to do this is right around sunset, because if you were to do this in the morning or the afternoon, the water is going to start evaporating. When you do it at sunset, it stays wet all night long, and that is what's going to accelerate the composting process. So we just want to soak down the straw bales really well, really get them wet on top, and let that water seep everywhere inside that straw bale, and then get it all over the sides of the straw bale as well. And my experience when it comes to watering things is that initially they tend to be hydrophobic, which means when they're dry they tend to repel the water. So it's better to do this in two passes. Start soaking them down in the beginning, that will prime them for accepting the water. Then when you're done, come back and start all over again and give them a second pass. After your first application of water, they should be much more likely to absorb the water well during days two and day three. Oh, and one word of advice. Before you begin the conditioning process of your straw bales, make sure that you lay them out in a location that is very close to where you want their final location to be. Moving around dry straw bales, not all that hard of work, but once they are soaking wet, they become really heavy. You do not want to move wet bales of straw. We just completed the three days of generously watering all of our straw bales, and now they are all fully saturated. Now, days four through nine are when things start heating up. 
literally, we are going to begin applying water-soluble nitrogen-based fertilizers to all of our straw bales, and this is going to initiate the hot composting process. These straw bales are going to heat up to an internal temperature as high as 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's this hot composting that conditions the straw bales, and it makes it suitable for us to use them as a growing medium. When conditioning your straw bales, there are two water-soluble nitrogen fertilizers typically used, urea 4600 and ammonium sulfate 2100. Now, both of these products cost about the same, but as you can see, the urea is twice as strong. Therefore, you only need to use half the amount of urea, so it is half the cost of using ammonium sulfate. For that reason, we will be using urea to condition all of our straw bales. All of the measurements in this video will be using urea fertilizer if you choose to use ammonium sulfate, you will have to double all of the amounts. Now a word for all of the strictly organic gardeners amongst us. You can use blood meal to condition your straw bales. However, it's going to cost you much more money and it will take more time. Blood meal is not only more expensive up front than urea, but it's only 1200. So you will have to use four times as much of it as you would a urea fertilizer. And also, because this is not water soluble, you will have to wait for it to break down and that will take more time. So it's going to extend the length of time it's going to take to condition your straw bales. For that reason, I think that urea is the best option even if you're an organic gardener. Factor in your straw bales probably aren't going to be organic anyway and you aren't applying this to a plant directly. You're only using it to condition your straw bales. So to save money, I would recommend using the urea for fertilizer and then once you plant things then you can go 100% organic. But if you're a true stickler you can use this product just know it's going to cost you more money up front and using it and it may take more time so you're going to have to use a thermometer to monitor the temperatures of your bales. Again all of the measurements I'm going to give you are going to be based on 4600 urea fertilizer. If you want a link for this fertilizer I will have it linked down on my Amazon storefront in the video description under soluble fertilizers and I'll also drop a direct link in the video description description as well. This is the fertilizer application schedule that you will want to follow for conditioning your straw bales using 4600 urea fertilizer. On days 4, 5, and 6, you will sprinkle one half cup of urea fertilizer evenly among your straw bales and then water it in very well. On days seven, eight, and nine, you will apply a quarter cup to your straw bales and water it in very well. So each straw bale will require 2.25 cups of fertilizer. Now there are two and a half cups of urea fertilizer in one pound. So it takes 0.9 pounds to season each straw bale. To make things simple, we can round up to one pound just so you'll have a little bit of a buffer. So you will need approximately one pound of urea nitrogen fertilizer for every single straw bale. Because I have 13 bales, I will need 13 pounds. Now I will show you how to apply it. The key to proper application of these nitrogen fertilizers is to sprinkle it evenly across the tops of the straw bales and then watering it in very quickly. That's because nitrogen fertilizers start off-gassing into the atmosphere very quickly if you don't water them in. That's why the fertilizer aisles and stores smell so powerfully like ammonia. You can smell all that nitrogen off-gassing, so they start losing potency. So you want to sprinkle them evenly across the top and water them in until it's mostly no longer visible but you're not going to be able to get all of it to penetrate into the straw bales. However, don't water it in so generously that all of it seeps out of the bottom. You want it to absorb into the bale and stay in the bale. Here we have our example straw bale and one half cup of the urea fertilizer. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to sprinkle it almost like you're salting meat. You're going to salt the surface basically evenly. And now that that fertilizer has been applied, we're going to lightly water it in so it seeps into the straw bale, but we're not going to water it in so powerfully that we blow all of those urea prills off and we don't want to add so much water that it seeps out of the bottom of the straw bale and we lose all of that fertilizer. We want to keep it in there. And that should be enough. Now we're going to go around to each individual bale of fertilizer. We're going to sprinkle on our urea and then we're going to water everything in. 
And as previously discussed on days five and six, we are going to follow that exact same procedure, adding half a cup of urea to all of our straw bales and watering it in well. Then on days seven, eight, and nine, we're going to have the amount of fertilizer down to a quarter cup each and water it in really well. And all the while, we are going to check on the temperature of the straw bales using a meat thermometer to make sure they are heating up adequately. Well, it's the very next morning and we got down to 34 degrees overnight. So these straw bales in theory should be pretty chilly. It's only been 15 hours since we applied the fertilizer. So let's stick a thermometer in one and see if there's any effect so far. So right now, this straw bale is only registering at 61.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 16.5 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty cool right now. However, we are going to check back in 24 hours and I bet you we will have a very different reading. As you can see, the air temperature is pretty chilly. So let's insert it into this straw bale. Holy smokes, look at that temperature climbing. We are up to 117 degrees Fahrenheit or 48 degrees Celsius and it is still rising. It's climbing like crazy. It's almost up to 120 degrees and that's after one single fertilizer application. Now obviously we're going to apply more so this is going to heat up even more throughout the coming days. We've had two applications of fertilizer to our straw bale garden thus far and today was a very miserable, chilly, dreary day in the mid 50s and cold rain has been falling on these bales of straw all day. It is by far the warmest it's been all day and it is only 59.4 degrees out. And I want to take you in because in theory these straw bales should be soaked with this cold rain and they should be really chilly. However, that is not the case. Now the first thing I'm noticing is the odor that is coming from this area. If you smell, it smells like a barnyard right here. You can actually smell these straw bales decomposing as we speak. There is a definite aroma of decomposition coming from them. And that is exactly what we're looking for. The other thing you'll notice is there is a slight discoloration to the tops of the straw bales. There is this light yellowish green hue that is forming on top. And again, that is the result of the decomposition process. It's exactly what we're looking for. And despite this really cold cold, dreary, wet day. These straw bales are cooking. Just look at that temperature, 128.1 degrees Fahrenheit. This straw bale right here is 128.7 degrees Fahrenheit or 53.7 degrees Celsius. It is even hotter than the other straw bale and I can feel it. It is warm to the touch. I have no doubt that had it been a nice warm sunny day, this would be well into the 130 plus degree range. I just made my third and final half cup of urea application to all of the straw bales. The next three days they will only receive a quarter cup and then after that urea is applied at a quarter cup strength we will test the temperature again only after the heating and composting process completes and the straw bale start cooling down to underneath 100 degrees Fahrenheit is it safe to plant in the straw bales. Otherwise, they could cook the plant's roots. All of the fertilizer has been applied to our straw bales and we are now at day 10 of the conditioning process. From days 10 through 14, all we have to do at this point is sit and wait for the conditioning process to end. During this time period, the only thing we have to do is ensure that our straw bales stay moist. We just had two days of rain here in North Carolina, so I have not had to add any water. But if it has been warm and dry in your area, you may want to lightly hose them down to make sure they stay moist during this phase. This phase is complete when the straw bales are no longer warm to the touch and when you insert a meat thermometer into the center of the bales, it is less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, this straw bale right now is 107. .5 six degrees Fahrenheit or 42 degrees Celsius. So it still has a little ways to go, but I can tell that the composting process is dying down because this area is starting to lose that barnyard smell. Now it's very important that if you're conditioning multiple straw bales like I am, you have to test the temperature of every straw bale individually. That straw bale I showed you before this one was well over 100 degrees, but this straw bale is only at 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 22.8 degrees Celsius. So if you only test one straw bale, you may find that the conditioning process is complete, but other ones are still hot. And if you plant anything in a hot straw bale, you could kill that plant. 
So once all of your straw bales are under 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it is then officially safe to plant in those straw bales. That could happen on day number 10. That could happen on day number 11, 12, 13, or 14. So depending on the straw bale, some may take longer than others. So be sure to stay tuned to this channel because next I'm going to show you how to plant plants inside the straw bales. We have about another two weeks or so of potential frost here where I live. And as soon as the chances of frost dies down, I'll be planting things in these straw bales. So if you're interested in this method of gardening, now's the time for you to go ahead and get your straw bales and begin this conditioning process. Because once the conditioning process is done on your bales, I should have a video posted on how to plant them. And that right there is how you can easily and quickly condition straw bales to begin your very own straw bale garden. And like I said, if you're interested in the fertilizer products that I use to do this conditioning process, I will make sure to link them all in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. And I'll also drop a couple of direct links in there to make your life easy so you can go right to the products. If you have any questions about the straw bale conditioning process, please ask them down in the comments below and I will do my best to respond to them. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video and that I use in my garden in general, I'll link them all below in my Amazon storefront in the video description. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Oh man, it's starting to rain out. It's going to be an ugly day and oh, who is this? Oh Dale, are you going outside for a walk in the rain? In your rubber ducky raincoat? Are you going for a walk, buddy? You want to go for a walk? Yeah? Oh, somebody's excited. Oh, he's all suited up, ready to get a little wet, but that won't stop Dale. Dale would walk if the streets were on fire. A little drizzle, no problem for Mr. Dale. Enjoy your walk, buddy. Have fun.